life support will start back up uh, tomorrow, Monday at six o'clock. Spread the word and bring a friend. It's open to the community. Um, United Women of Faith, that meets the second Monday at 1.30. Uh, so the next meeting is tomorrow in the Fellowship Hall. And there's an Emmaus gathering on Saturday, January 20th at 4 o'clock. It's worship and potluck. Any other announcements? Oh, yeah, I have that note right here. <laughs> um, ask Chuck. <laughs> ask Chuck for the date. Yeah, I, um, really what we're doing is we're getting together um, tomorrow afternoon. The time isn't set yet. I want to clear that with Brian. But um, yeah, tomorrow afternoon sometime we're going to be taking them down. Okay, thank you. O oh, great light, creator of all, just as light of light in the east led the wise ones to where Jesus was born, may your light continue to speak to our hearts and draw us nearer to you. We will now have the gift of Jane May. join me in Psalm 72 that's found on page 795 and 796. Give the king your justice, O God. May he judge your people with righteousness. Let the mountains bear prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like the rain that falls on the long grass, like showers that we find in the river. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound till the moon be no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the river. May his foes bow down before him, and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him, all nations serve him, for he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the widow and the fatherless. 
weak and the needy, and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their lives, and precious is the blood on his side. Long may he live. May gold of Sheba be given to him. May prayer be made for him continually, and blessings invoked for him all the day. May the mountains of the rain be land, and may it wave on the tops of the mountains, and may its fruit be like that of Lebanon. And may they blossom forth in the cities like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever. His fame continues as long as the sun. May people bless themselves by him. All nations fall in blessings. And our opening hymn is 254, We Three Kings.
turns. I have a joy to be back here. This Sunday. Sorry I missed last Sunday, but um, I'm feeling good. So thanks for coming along. Okay. And Don. I will serve. We bet. <laughs> no, I, I also missed last week and I'm happy to be back. And this is, Judy has been so patient with me and we've worked out some things so we have a little bit of dishes at the end. And so we're hoping to get something posted soon, but it might not be today. This is the service. Kate's got a service. I have a joy. Okay. Thank you for coming today and being with us. <laughs> oh, it's very nice. <laughs> it's my honor. Uh, we have a joy to journey to Green Bay on uh, Wednesday and Thursday, and Carolyn had her post chemotherapy CAT scan, and then we met with her doctor on Thursday. She is officially in remission. yesterday and he was able to plow some and this morning it's flat again but we had new wheels and tires on the way so they'll be put on tomorrow so that's a blessing I guess yeah <laughs> we can do that um, Darsha uh, just to remember Brian and Brenda as they're traveling yeah back to Texas so they're going to be here today I think that, that's the plan, I think. He said late today, but he said in a text sometime this afternoon. So I'm not going to more joy. I have a joy just for everyone that's here today. And um, we're sitting closer to the front, and it looks lovely. So thank you. It is everybody. nice to have you closer. Yeah. Nice? Yes. And they'll help Dawn because she'll be very supportive then up in the front. <laughs> hey, Judy. Well, oh, as long as we're doing joys, uh, and you mentioned the snow. Yesterday we had um, the Mackey family had their related Christmas affair so everybody could come. And we were thankful for the snow, so six kids from ages 8 to 15 go outside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Only for a while. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this epiphany, for the gifts that are mentioned in our scripture readings and in our hymns. We would like to thank you for uh, all the health matters, the people getting better. Um, it's a blessing to have Darsha and Judy back there looking after things and um, to have a congregation here sitting forward. We thank you for that. We thank you for the remission of cancer in our loved ones. And we pray for traveling mercies for Brian, Brenda, and Catherine. And we thank you for the snow, for the beauty of the snow, and for the people of the UP who depend on the snow to help them economically. We, uh, we say thank you for snow. <laughs> Keep it coming. Let the skiers ski and the snowmobilers fly along the trails and we will 
well. Pray for your light to shine on us and always, and we pray in the name of Jesus who taught his followers to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And our offering will now be taken, please. Lesson is from Isaiah 6, 60, sorry, 60, 1 to 6. Arise, shine, your light has come. The Lord's glory has shone on you. Through darkness covers, though darkness covers the earth and gloom the nations, the Lord will shine upon you. God's glory will appear over you. Nations will come to your light and the kings to your dawning radiance. Lift up your eyes and look all around. They are all gathered. They have come to you. Your sons will come from far away and your daughters on caregivers' hips. Then you will see and be radiant. Your heart will tremble and open wide because the sea's abundance will, turn, will be turned over to you. The nation's wealth will come to you. Countless camels will cover your land. 
young camels from Midian and Ephah. They will all come from Sheba, carrying gold and incense, proclaiming the Lord's praises. Our New Testament, the epistle reading is from Ephesians 3, 1 to 12. This is why I, Paul, am a prisoner of Christ for you Gentiles. You've heard, of course, about the responsibility to distribute God's grace, which God gave to me for you, right? God showed me his secret plan in a revelation, as I mentioned briefly before. When you read this, you'll understand my insight into the secret plan about Christ. Earlier generations didn't know this hidden path that God has now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets through the Spirit. This plan is that the Gentiles would be co-heirs and part of the same body, that they would share with the Jews in the promises of God in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I became a servant to the gospel because of the grace that God showed me through the exercise of his power. God gave his grace to me, the least of all God's people, to preach the good news about the immeasurable riches of Christ to the Gentiles. God sent me to reveal the secret plan that had been hidden since the beginning of time by God who created everything. God's purpose is now to show the rulers and the powers in the heavens that the many different varieties of his wisdom through the church. This was consistent with the plan he had from the beginning of time that he accomplished through Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ we have full, confident access to God through faith in him. Speak to God. Now our special music. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Um, we're singing the birthday of a king today, and it was a song that Jane picked out. Um, and I just want to say we love Jane and love her music and love having her anytime she accompanies us. It's always a blessing. So this is for Epiphany. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
beautiful. The choir I used to belong to in Canada, we sang that at Christmas often. Brought back happy memories. If you wish, you can stand for the gospel reading. It's from Matthew chapter 2, 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east. We have come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered and he gathered all the chief priests and the legal ex experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem in Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you among the least are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search carefully for the child. When you have found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went and looked the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until they saw it over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. When they opened their treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, because they were because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. The Gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we thank you for the gifts you have given us. Let this message be a gift to this congregation and a blessing to those who hear it beyond. Okay, this message I have, <laughs> I wrote it back in 2008, 2009. I had read the um, lectionary readings when I was asked to do this, and I had read it for the baptism, not epiphany. So I I had kind of been thinking on the baptism, you know, playing with that in my head and reading things, and, and then I got informed last week that it's, no, do it on epiphany. And I was like, oh no, oh no, I can do this. Thank you, God, I can do this, you know. And um, I got looking through some of my old notebooks and I found this and I thought, I'm gonna use it, it's a gift. <laughs> so hopefully it's a gift for you too. Um, it's not always easy to get up here, I'll tell you. But, um, I, I am focusing on gifts, the gifts that the Magi brought, the gifts that God gives us. Um, you know, the Magi followed the light of the star to bring them to the King, the Messiah. And the Magi, of course, brought the gold, frankincense, and myrrh that we sing about and read about. I like to study the Bible, I used to go to a lot of different Bible studies, well not a lot of different ones, but different ones through my life, but there was one that was consistent on the island. 
and it was an interdenominational one. We used to do a lot of Beth Moore studies and uh, Joyce Meyer and uh, some other ones. We did like two or three a year. Was, the Beth Moore ones are quite intense, but they're, they're really good. So I learned a lot through all those Bible studies. And I like to overthink things sometimes, get things a little complicated. And then I wrote this, and last week I said, okay, keep it simple. You know, it's something I learned in AA, you know, keep it simple. So I'm doing that. And back then I don't, oh, it was right after my husband had died, and I was finding it hard to focus on things. And that's another reason why it was keep it simple, you know. Um, and first things first. So I thought, what's simpler than the ABCs? So here's a little ABCs of gifts. The first one I have is Abraham. He was the first patriarch, a man of faith, definitely not perfect. He went where God led him. He and God made a covenant, and God promised that Abraham's descendants would be blessed forever, uncountable, as, the many, as many as the stars in the sky and the grains of sand in the desert. And that's from Genesis 22, 15 to 18. And B is for babies. They teach us patience, love, and they bring us hope and laughter. When God told Abraham Sarah was going to have a baby, he laughed. Sarah laughed. And Isaac means laughter. She was 90 when she had Isaac. That's from Genesis 18. Verse 12. And then, of course, there's our Bible, our book of stories, history, laws, love and war, miracles, angels, and a guidebook to our lives. C is for covenants, a permanent promise. The early ones involved blood sacrifice. With Noah, the covenant was that God promised not to flood the earth again and to destroy everything. Noah and his family were faithful and righteous. And there was the Abrahamic covenant, and the descendants were blessed. They were many and forever. They promised land and descendants. The old covenant made with Moses the Ten Commandments. That was a conditional covenant based on laws. The new covenant, the covenant of grace given to all, Jesus takes away our sin. He redeems us. I could go on, but the covenants could be a whole series of sermons. D. D is for David the son of Jesse of Bethlehem, a boy who slew the Philistine Goliath. He became a king and the ancestor of Jesus. Fourteen generations between Abraham and David. Fourteen generations between David and the captivity of Babylon. And fourteen generations between the captivity and Jesus. E, Egypt. It's either a place to run to or a place to run from, depending on the circumstances. Elizabeth. E is for Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. She too was older. Not as old as Sarah, but she was older. And she had been barren. But she was a faithful and righteous woman. She gave birth to John the Baptist. F is for faith. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? F is also for friendship. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 10. Two are better than one because they are good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. F is also for frankincense, the lovely fragrance brought to the Christ child. G is for gold, the gift for the Messiah. <coughs> G is for grace, freely given, not earned. John 1.16 says, And of his fullness we have received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth, but grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. H is hope and heaven. From Isaiah 65, a glorious new creation, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. I is for integrity. Better is the poor who walks in his integrity than the one who is perverse in his lips and is a fool. The book of Proverbs does not place a premium on health and wealth. It gives honor to integrity. J is for Judah, the fourth son of Isaac, ancestor of David. Genesis 49, 8 to 12, if you can find some of that there. The lion, the keeper of the scepter, the lawgiver, all of these are symbols of royalty. Joseph, J is for Joseph, descendant of Judah and David, husband of Mary, a man of faith, responsibility, and, and he was very protective. K is for knowledge. We need to learn what is in the Old and New Testaments. Knowledge gives us the basis for our beliefs, our faith, and it strengthens our hope. Isaiah 33, 6 states, Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of our times, and the strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord, is his treasure. Proverbs 9, 1. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. L is for the light of the world. From John 6, 1 to 9. Jesus is the light. John the Baptist, the lamp that bore witness to the light. L is for love. <coughs> Love is all through the Bible. And L is for life. And for me, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8. Has been very special to me through my life. And I've used it different times. In different sermons and messages. Everything has a time. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. 
a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. M is for Mary, chosen by God, sorry, chosen by God to give birth to the Messiah, Mary, wife of Joseph, descendant of, the, of David, descendant of Judah, grandson of the first patriarch, Abraham, a line of royalty is direct, old to new. M is for myrrh. It was a commercial commodity mentioned in Genesis 37, 25. It was a royal cosmetic mentioned in Esther chapter 2, 12. And it was also perfumed with myrrh and frankincense. That's in Song of Solomon 3, 6. It's also one of the nativity gifts an embalming ingredient, and we'll learn about that later. M is for mystery. We don't need to understand everything. We need faith. 1 Timothy 3.16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of God, of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in glory. When I first moved to St. Joseph Island, we had a new minister, and he gave me this poster, I guess I was doing Sunday school or something at that time, and he gave some of us these little gifts, and he gave me this poster, and it said, life is a mystery to be lived, not a problem to be solved. So you don't always have to be re overthinking and stressing. Just let it be, let go and let God. Life is a mystery. And as for Noah, another man of God, had great faith, he entered into the covenant with God. And as for nature from the creation story, to the praises of the psalmist, to the value of a sparrow in Luke 12, 6, and the wildflowers in Luke 12, 27. This is my Father's world, and is for nature. O is for options. Options are a gift. Sometimes we don't like to make choices, but you know, we have options out there and we have to choose. John 6, 66 to 69. From that time, many of his di disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we have all options too. We have options to love and to care for all, or to be exclusive and close-hearted. I choose to be more open and loving it's not always easy, but it's God's command to love our neighbors as ourselves. He is for patriarchs and their families, the prophets and their visions, the poetry and praise of the Psalms, the wise perspective in Proverbs, and the parables of Jesus the teacher. 
Q. Now that should make you think, but you're going to come up with Q. Q is Queen Esther. She was a Hebrew orphan raised in Susa in Persia. She was chosen to be the pride of the king. Here we go, a harem. Well, I'll say his other name, Xerxes. She was beautiful in spirit and physically. She was aided by her older cousin, Mordecai. She used her position, prayer, and fasting to save the Jews from slaughter. The Feast of Purim was established. We studied this book in that Bible study group I went to, and it was like reading a political thriller sometimes, reading the book of, you know, of Esther. It's really quite a book. And Rebecca. If you want to read about a remarkably complex woman, read about Rebecca and her choices and consequences. That starts at Genesis 24. S is our Savior. Jesus came to save, not to judge. John 12, 47. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but I came to save the world. T is for truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. Trust. T is for trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3, 5. When I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me the strength I need. From Psalm 138.3. You, I use your gifts and talents for the glory of God. Using what you Using what he gives you pleases him. We have the parable of the talents. That's part of that. Unity from Ephesians 4, 3, 6. Endeavoring to keep unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. V is for all the versions of the Bible, Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, King James, New King James, NIV, Holman, the Good News, the Living Bible, the Message, the NLV, Amplified, Revised Standard, etc. There is a lot of Bibles out there. W, the Word, John 1, the Eternal Word, Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. One of the strongest passages in the New Testament for declaring the deity of Jesus Christ. X is for Xerxes. King, whatever his name is, I can't say it right, so I'm not even going to try. He married Esther. Xerxes kept his vow to Esther. Therefore, the Jews of Persia and his provinces and those of his allies were saved from death and destruction. The captivity of Babylon was ending. We're to why already. Hmm. Why? You are all gifts. Gifts to your family and friends and gifts to us here as our congregation. 
You see, there's a lot of Z names in the Bible. That one was kind of funny. Zipporah, wife of Moses. Zephaniah, priest and friend of Jeremiah during Zedekiah's rule. Zacharias, a priest, the husband of Elizabeth, father of John the Baptist. Zacchaeus was a tax collector who became a follower of Jesus, according to the Gospel of Luke. Zebedee, a Galilean fisherman, the father of James and John. There you go. The alphabet, the gift. It's all there in the Bible. I tried to use as much scripture as I could to list our gifts. And I thank you for being here. You are a gift to me. Oh, I had something other than funny, so I forgot until I turned the page. Did you get the paper yesterday with the comments? Okay. There's one here. I had to bring it. Brian said, where'd the funnies go? I said, I brought them to church with me. <laughs> and it's BC. And he's writing on a tablet. And what gift would you get? give to your enemies if you could? Signed Peter. And he throws it in the ocean and, he, and it blows away because it's on and he sits and he waits, and there's the moon, and he waits, and the thing comes back. Peace. Peace is the gift that he would give his enemy. We need to pray for peace. There's a lot of struggles out there, nationally, internationally, spiritually. We need to keep our world in prayer. I lost my bolt. There it is. <laughs> and our closing hymn is Once in Royal David City, 250.
I lost my bed and There it is. <laughs> May this newborn year be a blessed one. May God visit our lives like dawn from on high. May hope lead you on. Peace be with you. Love visit you and joy accompany you throughout 2024. Now in peace of Christ to bear God's light to the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. You're welcome. Yeah, I don't know. 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 Yeah, I don't know.